This is uh, C2 paper from 2006. Um, uh, just some helpful hints and suggestions on how to uh, answer the questions. And this is part one because I can't do it all in one thing. It won't let me. Right, uh, question one. We've got uh, this function here. Uh, it says, given that f of 1 equals 0, find the value of c. Right, so all you've got to do is substitute uh Substitute in um, 1 for x, so you got 2 times 1 cubed plus 1 squared minus 5 times 1 plus c, and you know that equals 0. Right, you can do that fairly straightforward, um, although I do need to tell you that c equals 2. Um, now to factorise completely, I know that f. Uh, x minus 1 is a factor, and I know that that multiplied by something equals what we were given in the first place. So here we go. We've got minus 5x plus 2, which I found from part A. Um, x times what makes 2x cubed? Well, that's got to be 2x squared. And minus 1 times what makes plus 2, so that has to be minus 2. Now, it's finding the bit in the middle, basically, the x uh, coefficient. So if I do minus 1 times 2x squared, I get minus 2x squared. But I want plus 1x squared, so I need to do plus 3x in order to complete that. Um, and then you should be able to factorise that fairly um, easily. It says, for the next bit, find the remainder when f of x is divided by um, the 2x uh, minus 3. So what it's asking you to do is to put this into your function all right, and find out what pops out at the end. Right, question 2. Uh, we've got, it says... Uh, find the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of this here. So that's fine where p is a constant. All right, so here we go. So the first term would be 1 to the power 9. The second term, right, remember it's n factorial. NCR, however you want to put it, um, n minus r factorial. Oops, uh, r factorial. All right which is sometimes written as n, oops, what am I doing, jeez, n, c, r, which is sometimes written like this, isn't it? Okay, so there we go. So we need to do, on the top, we need to do, it's always 9 factorial, but then uh, we're going to do 8 factorial, 1 factorial. Remember, this part here goes down by 1 each time, which means that this part here has to go up by 1 each time. And then we're going to multiply that by 1 to the power 8 and multiply that by, uh, and I'm going to put this in brackets to the power 1. Remember, again, the powers add up to make 9, so that plus that make 9. And the next bit is always 9 factorial on the top. And uh, we've got uh, 7 factorial, 2 factorial times 1 to the power 7 times, and this is where the brackets come into play, px to the power 2. Um, should be able to simplify that uh, fairly easily, so 1 to the power 9 is 1. All right, this becomes 9, so 9 to the times 1 uh, times p to the x, so it just becomes 9px. And then th this bit here, all right, you basically... It simplifies to uh, 9 times 8 over 2 times 1, uh, which is essentially 9 times 4, which is uh, where are we? 36. Uh, and then it's the 1 to the power 7 is 1, right? P squared, x squared. So there we go, that's part A done. Now, part B, it says the first three terms are, and this is where I'm reading here. First three terms are 1, 36x, and qx squared. Find the values of p and q. Well, for part b, we know that 9p has to equal 36. So therefore, p equals 4. And once we've got p equals 4, we should be able to find q 
um, from this part here. Question three. Uh, in the figure, find the exact length of AB. It says A is 4, 0, B is 3, 5. Well, that's a bit of Pythagoras, isn't it? So, uh, difference in the x coordinates is 1, so it's 1 squared. Difference in the y coordinates is 5, so 5 squared, which equals root 26. Uh, find the coordinates of the midpoint P. Well, I, to be honest, you should be able to do that. It's, but here we go. We add up the x coordinates and divide by 2. Add up the y coordinates and divide by 2. All right, once you've got that, um, remember the general formula for a for the equation of a circle is uh, x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared, right where which has a center um, a b and a radius of r. All right, well, you've just worked out the center here, and you've just worked out the radius here, so you should be able to finish that off. Question four. Okay, now it says uh, the first term of geometric series is uh, 120. Sum to infinity of the series is 480. So we need to use uh, this initially, we get, uh, so the sum to infinity, which is a over 1 minus r, equals 480. All right. Um, we also know that a, so hold on, I'll just rub that out. Actually, I've already got a, haven't I? I just suddenly realised. Um, so actually, we've got 120 over 1 minus r equals 480, you should be able to solve that and it will find that this is your answer. If you don't get that, go back and check it. Find to two decimal places the difference between the fifth and sixth terms. Well, uh, all you've got to do is put... Hold on, hold on, I'm just trying to... I'm going to have to squeeze it in a little bit here. So I need to do 120, this is for the fourth term, times 3 quarters to the power 4. All right, that'll give you the fourth term. You can probably guess what the fifth term is. Find the difference. That's pretty straightforward again. Uh, part C, calculate the sum of the first seven terms. So you've got S to the um, uh, S7, seven, sum 7. Uh, is 120. Again, we're using these formulas from the formula booklet. 1 minus, uh, what is it, 3 quarters, that's it, to the power 7, all over uh, 1 minus 3 quarters. All right, you should be able to figure that out. And it says the sum of the first n terms of the series is greater than 300. Calculate the smallest possible value of n. Well, you're essentially doing this sort of thing. So 120, it's, it's what you did in part C, essentially. All right, but we don't know what N is. Uh, and we're going 1 minus 3 quarters. Um, oops, I was going to put brackets around that. There you go, it's greater than 300. Now, you'll end up, once you simplify all that, you'll end up with 3 quarters to the power N, is greater than or less than something, all right, and you'll have to use some logs, all right, but uh, we'll simplify that and see, see how you get on. Right, question five. Well, we've got um, parts of a circle, essentially. Here we go. It says, show that cos AOB, so we're finding this angle here, is uh, 7 25ths. Uh, well, it's going to be cosine rule, isn't it? So, uh, cos of, and I'll just call it O, equals, well, it's the two adjacent sides, 5 squared plus 5 squared, minus the opposite side, 6 squared, all over uh, 2 times the, there. Okay, so that should give you O, and I'm going to give you the answer. So if you don't get that, go back and check it. Hence, find that in radians, well, again, put your calculator in radians mode, 
shouldn't be too bad. Now the area of the uh, sector, that's essentially GCSE but with radians. So here we go, you should have something like pi times 5 squared times and they give you actually no I need uh, the answer to part B 1.287 is the answer to part B over 2 pi right pi's cancel and uh, you just end up with uh, 5 squared times 1.287 divided by 2 which should give you an answer hence calculate the shaded area um, you're going to be you've got your your answer from part C so this is part C uh, take away a half um, times 5 times 5 times sine of, uh, what was it, 1.287. Right, so again, fairly straightforward. Um, you got the whole, the whole thing, take away the triangle, which you can find using that formula there.